Hi everyone, welcome back to Sin Lab Podcast. I remain your host, Uche Namadi, and I'm still with the amazing Dr. Oweye, the consultant hematologist of Sin Lab Nigeria. Thank you. Miss Patsy Mokunga, the legal and compliance manager of Sin Lab Nigeria, and Mrs. Oluyemi Olaogun, the key account manager of Sin Lab Nigeria. In the previous episode, we talked about understanding paternity fraud. It was quite interesting and insightful. Now we shall dive into the science behind DNA testing. So do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow Sin Lab Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. Over to Dr. Weye. Yeah. I'd like to start by asking what exactly is DNA and how does it determine paternity? Um, thanks. Um, DNA is means deoxyribonucleic acid, and um, it contains the genetic information. It codes, you know, yeah. for the genetic information, you know, of an individual. So that basically means that it's the d- DNA that determines your genes, okay. which are the basic units of inheritance. So everything about you, all the information about you, about the way you look or the way your body would function, yeah. they are all coded in the DNA. And of course, that is, as I said earlier on, is what determines your genes and that's the basic unit of inheritance. So DNA testing basically is is like a test of identity, hmm. you know, so to say. So, and that's why it's very, very, very impor- important. And that's, it's, it's the most um, 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 potent tool uh-huh. for actually determining one's identity. Okay. You understand? So um, that's basically just, you know, DNA. And okay. um, the, the types of DNA that we have, yes. especially when it comes to I paternity. I was going to ask that. Yeah, paternity testing. Mm. You, we have um, the, the types that we have. We have the um, Y chromosome, okay. mitochondria DNA, PCR, and then um, the SDR. That's um, um, the um, short tandem, tandem. repeat, okay. you know, part of the genetic segment. But then um, for paternity testing, Basically, we usually do is the PCR. That's a polymerase chain reaction. Okay. So polymerase chain reaction is the like gold standard, you okay. know, for it. Yeah. And then basically, what polymerase chain reaction does is that it helps you actually amplify, you know, the particular genes. Now, the basic gist behind it is that um, the SDR genes that um, sorry, I'm using, you know, some sometimes. But... Some of us will just be looking <laughs> and smiling. Yeah. Um, yeah. Short tandem repeats, mm-hmm. like part of you know the genetic sequences, they are they are very varied, and they are um, they are um, unique to each individual. As in every like three percent of the, the human genes consist of that short tandem repeat, you know sequences of DNA, and they d- define and determine individuality. So huh. basically, what we do is that the PCR helps us to amplify these sequences, and then. In case of um, paternity disputes, hmm. or in case maybe you want to just have, you know, informational DNA testing, uh-huh. you know, we get the alleged father and okay. then the child. And if it's the father, the mother and the child, we use the PCR to actually amplify these sequences. And then we look for a match, hmm. you know, in, in, you know, then we match the child's DNA with that of the father if it's alleged father if it's in the case of parenting parentage rather okay. we do match the child with that of the father and then the mother usually we we we, we um I say we actually det- we, we use about 15 you know str sequences at least wow. so and then we look for the percentage of of, of you know of, of match of, of, yes of the match so you can so, never go wrong and then um, you know for the test if you have a zero match, that excludes paternity. Oh. So, but if you have about more than ninety nine point five percent match, mm. then of course that. And that's your yeah, daddy. Mm-hmm. 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 What happens between zero and that ninety nine? Like from zero to hundred, what the happens with mismatch? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can call it mismatch. <laughs> <laughs> then <laughs> there's a lot of statistical tools. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, what what if the child matches the guy like eighty <laughs> percent? Do you understand? <laughs> because not ninety nine. Me eighty percent is child, no? Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a, there's a there's a statistical analysis. Of course, we come back okay. with the percentage match using mm. some certain bio, you know, um, biostatistical tools, you okay. know, for that. But um, what is generally agreed upon the world mm. over is, you know, for paternity testing, you mm. re- you it, it, it you require a ni- at least ninety nine point five percent match. You know, for you to say, okay, this is but someone's some, child. I've seen 99.99. So, <laughs> it must then, be 99.99. Yes. 
Saint. So you so can. I feel like Patsy is not. Yeah, I don't okay, care with these okay, because my sister <laughs> chills. But it's not wait, wait. <laughs> just <laughs> over fifty percent match. And then it goes. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because like, what if it's because it's a very sensitive test. test. You you then go and put it to his family like this guy is he's not so your dad. That is why it's a sensitive <laughs> test. That has but to he go it was just not ninety percent. We will definitely okay. we'll, we'll definitely talk now, about let, this. Let me let me let me say something about it. I mean, it's a. A procedure that has been tested, mm-hmm. and then for um, there had to be a general consensus on that. Mm-hmm. You find out that, um, um, it, of course, it's a statistical probability thing for you to actually come to a general consensus on it. That means yeah. it has been proven, you know, over time, and then you find out that the sequences, you know, of the SDRs that are matching, you see that for people who are related paternally. You know, they have at least, all of them will have at least yes. a 99.5% match. Okay. In fact, 99, just as I said, 99.9%. You okay. would see that, that be you know, a whole lot of times. So oh. when you actually see um, um, something else, so there's a whole lot of other things. Huh. Uh, statistical analysis, mm. you know, that you want to do. You may have to that do some other testing. That is behind the calculation. <laughs> Doctor, you you're you're already testing. schooling us. We feel like we're in university now, but let's yeah. just hold on. So we'll come that. back to all those um, pathophysiology and pathogenesis. <laughs> but let me even, I'm curious to know, uh, and I'm coming to you, um, Mrs. Yemi. So I'm going to ask about the collection, sample collection. So what is the process of collecting and analyzing DNA samples for paternity testing? Okay, for for example, for collecting um, DNA samples for the individual to test the biological relationship, um, in C lab, is a very sensitive one that everybody takes so serious. Of course. Number one, the the request comes in in different angles. Okay. It can come in from the court, and the court will strictly state it huh. in their order that we want all parties involved. Now, if the, even the party is in abroad or someone is in Ghana or in Lagos, all parties must be at the center. Physically? Phys- exactly. They have to all be around. Because collection can come in, like we earlier discussed about paternity fraud. Mm. Number one, it can arise from there. Okay. So now what we agree is, in our protocol, that everybody must be available for the collection to take place. So now what we do is, we take sample from the Boca, Boca, uh, from the cheek, okay. using the Boca swab. Okay. So now, when this is being done, everybody must identify each other that I know you, I don't know you. But by the time you agree that you know each other, then you are certain that we can proceed with the collection. By the time we okay. take the collection, in their presence, sample will be taken and sealed up. And it's something that they must sign across because in our protocol, again, in Sin Lab, what we do is, by the time the, the envelope is broken, because what we call a chain of custody. Okay. We must not break anything called mm-hmm. chain of custody. If mm-hmm. that is broken, then the paternity number one can lead to number one paternity fraud and the sensitivity of that result can be argued out. Wow. So now, everybody must be on ground to testify that this sample is well taken, sealed up, and the same way it is sealed up, nobody opens it. It is sent to the performing laboratory immediately. Now, when the result comes in, then it goes straight to the reliable department that must open it. So collection is it, it, it's a it's a very sensitive one that yes. we can get query on, on it if it is not perfectly done well. Yes. So collection is something that we need to critically look at it if it's not done in a proper way. So collection from the book as well, from, uh, from the cheek, or you can use a blood sample. Okay. But the one currently ongoing that is more sensitive one for now that we currently do is by taking sample from the booker, from the cheek, of the individual uh, parties that are involved in the biological testing. Wow. Because yeah. if you miss it mm. at the pre-analytical stage, yeah, then everything can just flops. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Then, uh, let me just add something about that. The, the book um, um, sample is much more preferred, just as Madayami has said, because, of course, it is easier to perform. It's non-invasive. Mm. And, of course, it's easier to store. Than, yeah, for, you know, and for longer period of time mm. also you know, you know for analysis so that's why it's it's you know what is okay. used preferably that's why it's preferred then so, o- other then, other ones is mm. some people can come in they'll tell you i'm not available for this collection then can you come to take this sample this is it is not allowed because you must be at the there. end of the day you must be there to witness this some people can even tell you was i the one you took sample from wow 
So there are so many allegations that we have around this collection. Wow. So we must be very, be very, very careful. careful when handling yeah. uh, collections of a DNA sample. So let me even um ask, mm. are there oh, how accurate are DNA tests in determining paternity? Okay. Are, are they very accurate? Are there issues where people come back and say, Oh, you gave me the wrong daddy? <laughs> <laughs> well, usually Sometimes you actually find people coming up and say, oh, yeah, I got the wrong results and things and things like that. Most of the times I just think most of those things are, you know, some emotional attempts. Yes, I think so too. To deviate from the truth. Yes. The truth is with the DNA analysis procedure, um, the test is 99% Point nine. Percent accurate. Yeah, you mentioned so, yeah, earlier. It's like, like, because basically, what you are doing is you're actually getting down, down, down into genetic yes. information. So the only thing, the only thing that can actually cause errors, uh, um, there is, it's probably when you have pre-analytical issues. Okay, samples like are not she collected explained. properly. There's there's been contamination at the point of contact. You understand? Okay, so like for example, now if you're using bucal swab, mm-hmm. um, the, the, the mouth has to be free for like twenty minutes. There must not nothing oh. must come to that mouth twenty oh. minutes before the test. So you're going to keep quiet for twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> not that. No, no, for <laughs> children, <laughs> for let's say for for a child that is over two weeks, what yeah. we do is we tell them like for one two hours. <laughs> Stop breastfeeding. Yeah. You don't take water. You don't okay. take anything. So no, make sure okay. that we keep the, exactly. the, okay. the DNA intact. Yeah. So let me so, even let me even go to the legal part. Have you ever had issues like this in the courts where they say, "Oh, well," in the, and what do you do? It's mostly Viasin Lab. You know, um, personally, I've not been in court for a patent <laughs> issue, but Viasin <laughs> Lab. It, when um, patent issues come up in court, is more they are more. It's more than likely it's a divorce matter. Oh. Or an inheritance mm. matter. Okay. Like I said, because it's not a criminal issue, it can't. It won't come up on it its own. It won't hold water. Okay. Yeah, it won't come up on its own. Mm. Somebody, it's, not, it has to be tied to yeah, something. Yeah, it has to be tied mm. to something. Yeah. So you see it a lot in inheritance issues mm. where people are trying to determine mm. who are the who children. Who inherit the um, father's property? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or in divorce when people are fighting and it's suddenly you're not you're not the father of this child. Hey. Or um, I, I'm not even sure that this student I had for me are mine. You know mm-hmm. that kind of wow. issue, and then it now ball trickles down into because um, while the law provides for you to be able to the court to be able to order for um, a paternity test mm-hmm. in the case of a child, when it comes to an adult, there's questioning because mm. now you're talking about an an, an, an adult. adult and ordering for that kind of test can be considered invasion of privacy. Wow. Yeah. So okay. with with adults, there's this um, blurriness that you they can't necessarily just be determined. But for children, yes, the court can easily just order mm. that a paternity okay. be test be mm-hmm. done for a child. Wow. So Thank you very much. Yeah. This has been very educative. And to my listeners, for the sake of clarity and peace of mind, if you're ever in doubt, please consider DNA testing. Do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow Sin Lab Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs>